In this experiment, I'm looking at how changing temperature affects the rate of a chemical reaction. And we're doing one that chemistry teachers often refer to as the disappearing cross experiment, where sodium thiosulfate reacts with hydrochloric acid and the solution goes cloudy. First of all, I'll get the experiment going. Here we have the cross on a piece of paper. I've measured out some sodium thiosulfate. I've got a stopwatch at the ready, and as soon as my acid hits the reaction mixture, I'm going to start my stopwatch. Give it a good shake. Now, you may not be able to see the cross from there yet. I'll just adjust it so you can see the cross. And the solution goes cloudy. You stop the stopwatch when you can no longer see the cross. It's a very simple experiment in principle. Now I would then repeat the experiment using the acid and thiosulfate solutions at different temperatures because in this experiment I'm trying to find out the effect of temperature on the rate of my reaction. So, temperature is the independent variable. That's the thing that you are going to be changing in your experiment and you're trying to find the effect of changing the independent variable. The dependent variable is the time it takes for the solution to go so cloudy that you cannot see through it any longer. You can't see the cross. So that's the independent and the dependent variable. This experiment has lots of what we call control variables. The control variables are the experiments, oh, sorry, are the variables you have to keep the same to make it a fair test. And obvious things to keep the same, you have to keep the volume and the concentration of the acid the same, and the volume and the concentration of sodium thiosulfate the same. You're changing temperature. The two things that are most likely to affect the reaction are the concentration of the two chemicals. There are a few other things that are unique to this experiment. For example, the cross. If you chose a much thicker, bolder cross, it would be easier to see it. So you do need to use the same cross each time. Another thing is the shape of the container. This is about the only experiment you'll ever come across where the shape of the container is important. If I choose a very wide container, then the depth of liquid I have will be very low. Whereas if I chose a narrower container, like a beaker or a smaller beaker or something like that, the depth of liquid would be higher and that would cause my cross to disappear more quickly. So the choice of apparatus in this experiment alone is important. Other bits of apparatus, you can forget about them. You know, I often read answers from pupils where they say, to make it a fair test, I must use the same test tube, I must use the same thermometer, I must use the same measuring cylinder. Those things are all really quite trivial and they're not going to affect your reaction. The first question on an, uh, an exam paper on this experiment a few years ago was explain why the solution goes cloudy. Now at first this seems like a rather strange question and a lot of pupils were completely flummoxed by it. But the information you need is all actually in the question. The solution goes cloudy because one of the chemicals, sulphur, happens to be an insoluble solid. So here is the balanced equation and if you can see clearly there the sulphur says S after it. It's telling us from the equation that sulphur is a solid. It's not soluble. Unlike the other products, well, sodium chloride, aqueous, that means dissolved in water, water itself, liquid, sulphur dioxide, a gas, we may come back to that, but the sulphur is an insoluble solid or a precipitate. So to answer the question, which was, explain why the solution goes cloudy, we should say because sulphur, one of the products, is an insoluble solid, or you could say is a precipitate, and that's all you need to say. Notice it's two marks, so you need to say a bit of explanation. 
One mark for saying would be for saying because a solid is formed or because something insoluble is formed, and the other mark is for saying that that substance is sulphur. You're not expected to remember an obscure fact like sulphur is insoluble in water. You're expected to look at the equation. The next part of the question simply asked, state two variables the student must control to make the investigation a fair test. And we've already talked about those, changing, uh, keeping the concentration of each reactant the same, keeping the volume of each reactant the same are the two best. Here now is a typical exam question showing the graph of changing temperature, the independent variable, and the time it took for the cross to disappear. And you'll see that it's a smooth curve, but there is one point that doesn't fit the curve. Very common question. It says, one of the points on the graph is anomalous. Draw a circle around this point. Suggest what could have happened in the experiment that may have caused this anomalous result. Now, this is worth two marks. One mark will be for doing what it says, circling the anomalous point. The second mark, it may be quite difficult to achieve this second mark. For example, just saying they timed it wrong or they didn't start the stopwatch on time would not necessarily get you the right answer, uh, get you the mark. This particular reaction at 20 degrees C, the result is higher than the line. That means it took longer to obscure the cross than they expected. Now, if the reaction took longer, the reaction must have been slower. So if the reaction is slower, then we know perhaps the temperature was less than 20 degrees C. Or perhaps one of the reactants, one of the solutions they used, was less concentrated than it should have been. Don't just say they timed it wrong, or the temperature was wrong, or they used the wrong concentration. For the second mark, to be sure of scoring that, think about whether the result is higher or lower than it should be. In this case, the time taken is longer than it should be, the reaction is slower, so either the temperature was lower or one of the reactants was perhaps a lower concentration. The next part of the question says, what conclusions, in the plural, can you draw from the graph? And it's worth two marks. Now, one mark is fairly straightforward. You could say, as the temperature gets higher, the time taken to react, or for the cross to disappear, gets lower. But you can go further than that. You can see, for example, that between uh, about five degrees, no less than that, about two or three degrees, and between 10 degrees, there's a big fall in the time taken. Between 20, 10 degrees and 20 degrees, there's a significant fall in the amount of time it takes to react. But between 50 and 60, and between 60 and 70, there's hardly any change in the time taken. So, for one mark, you'll say yes, as temperature gets higher, the time it takes to react gets less. But for a second mark, you could say, at higher temperatures, the difference in time taken is very small, or is much less. Whereas at low temperatures, the difference in time taken is much bigger. There's a big fall there. There's hardly any fall at all here. And that's how you can be sure of scoring two marks. The new GCSE syllabus is quite mathematical in its content, and here is a good maths question that you need to um, try and answer. Again, it's worth two marks. It says, for many reactions, the rate of reaction doubles with every 10 degrees C increase in temperature. Is this statement correct for this reaction? Justify your answer. It's only worth two marks, but there's a quite a lot you have to do. So we look at the graph again, and we see at 10 degrees, the time taken is about 27 to 28 seconds. At 20 degrees, the time taken is about 14 seconds. Now, 28 is double 14, or put it another way, 14 is half 28. So going from 10 to 20 degrees C, the time taken has halved, that means the rate has doubled. 
Going from 20 to 30 degrees C, we said at 20 it takes about 14 seconds. At 30 degrees C, it takes about 7 seconds. So you've increased temperature by 10 degrees, and the time has halved, so the rate has doubled. So, is this statement correct for this reaction? Justify your answer. Yes, it is. Going from 10 degrees to 20 degrees, the time halves, so the rate doubles. Going from 20 to 30 degrees, the time halves, so the rate doubles. Justify your answer. You've justified it. However, you could answer, no, it's not, because from between 50 and 60 degrees, the rate has hardly changed. You haven't halved the time taken. From 60 to 70, again, the rate has hardly changed. So, either you can answer yes and give your uh, data to justify it, or you could say no, it's not true at higher temperatures. So there are two possible answers to this, and so long as you use the results to justify your answer, you can score full marks. Finally, two more questions about this experiment. Explain why the results may be less accurate at 60 degrees C than at 40 degrees C. Well, at 60 degrees C, the hot liquid is likely to cool down quicker than it is at 40. That's one reason. Another reason is, if we looked back at the graph, at 60 degrees C, the reaction only took four seconds, and the error in measuring the rate of a reaction starting and stopping the stopwatch is going to be quite big if the whole experiment only takes four seconds. Whereas at 40 degrees C, when the reaction took about, uh, I can't remember what it was, but a longer time, then timing is less of an error. So there are two possible answers to that. It then says, suggest one change that the student could make to reduce error in this experiment. Explain why this change would make the results more accurate. Okay, one change the student could make. They could insulate the flask so it doesn't cool down. So one mark, insulate the flask. Second mark, the temperature would stay constant throughout the reaction or would almost stay constant. So that would get you the second mark. There are other things you could do. You could repeat each reading and then take an average, calculate a mean from all the results, but you should also stress that you would omit any anomalous results. So for each temperature, perhaps do the experiment three times. If there are any anomalous results, you can omit them. By working out an average, you reduce the random error in your experiment. The 